I'm Drake Bragg. And I'm Thomas Moore. And we're discussing why Raskolnikov's theories on crime ultimately fail him. Fyodor Dostoevsky was born November 11th, 1821 in Moscow, Russia. He was educated at home until 1833. Upon graduating from the St. Petersburg Military Engineering Technical University, instead of becoming a military engineer, he decided to become a writer. On November 16th in 1849, he was sentenced to uh, death by firing squad by the, at the time, czarist government. However, on December 22nd, on the date of the execution, he was given a reprieve and instead sent to Siberia for eight years for hard labor. Released in 1854, he returned to Russia and his home in St. Petersburg in 1859, where he married his then wife. However, by 1865, his wife, brother, and the magazine he had started all died, leaving him in crippling debt and was driven to gambling. In 1866, he published Crime and Punishment, and in 1867, he married a stenographer, and the couple fled to Europe to escape his uh, debtors. In 1872, he wrote The Possessed. It was really successful, and then the couple returned to St. Petersburg shortly after. In 1880, he uh, published The Brothers Karamozov to immediate success, but he died a year later. His works explore the human condition. He is also credited with shaping uh, what is now existentialism. Post-Siberia, his work takes on the common themes of crime and punishment, as well as suffering and redemption through that suffering. Dostoevsky's characters often challenge either Orthodox Christianity or Utopian Socialism. Some of the themes in his most popular books include uh, the burden of free will, conflict between faith and doubt, uh, pervasiveness of moral responsibility, um, the fallacies of rationalism and utopianism, artificial reality of Russian culture, and uh, the ideal human being. Uh, his most famous works are The Brothers Karamazov, uh, Notes from the Underground, and The Idiot. They're all, um, they all kind of touch on uh, differences between Russian um, Orthodox and then uh, the new nihilism. It's kind of like a middle ground between the two. The novel Crime and Punishment's premise, or main premise, is the psychology of crime and, of crime and thus punishment. The idea of the Ubermensch and Russian nihilism at the time of the 1860s. Uh, the significance of the, op of the uh, title, Crime and Punishment, it's pretty clean. It's uh, short and concise. It's a good summary of the um, work. But um, crime isn't the closest translation in Russian to the actual word. Transgression is a closer uh, translation. And the difference between transgression and crime is transgression is more of, you know, this isn't necessary anymore. This rule is obsolete, and crime is more of a senseless thing. Raskolnikov is a student taken by the blooming ideas of utilitarianism in his youth. Wanting to test his strength in his convictions of this newfound belief, he takes it upon himself to murder a local pawnbroker that is not popular with the locals, in the interest that he fools himself into thinking that it's for the good of the many. However, he does not account for at all the psychological fallout that comes with bludgeoning someone to death. He deals with the stress of the murders, and it really war it really warps his uh, mind psychologically. Um, uh, an investigator comes about named Porfiry Petrovich, and um, he comes in and tells Raskolnikov to beat him. And uh, Porfiry states that he doesn't have any evidence, but he knows Raskolnikov did it. And um, he just, you know, keeps on playing cat and mouse games with uh, Raskolnikov. Raskolnikov ends up seeking solace in a girl named um, Sonia, who is deeply religious and, you know, uh, Russian Orthodox Christianity. Uh, she tells him he must confess in order to uh, get redemption and retribution. Um, he goes to the middle of the market and uh, kisses the ground and begs God for forgiveness. 
and um, he afterwards goes to the police station and confesses to Pure Fury Petrovich. A year and a half later, the epilogue picks up with Raskolnikov already in Siberia after his confession nine months into his eight-month sentence. Sonia has also moved to the town outside of um, where Raskolnikov is held in an attempt to console him and help him through his times. Uh, while he is away, his mother dies, and eventually he realizes that he loves Sonia deeply and begins to show remorse for what he has done. One of the flaws in Raskolnikov's theory of of crime that he does not take into account is his religious upbringing. Raskolnikov was raised in a Christian Russian Orthodox home, and um, this is best exemplified by his mother's letter written to him. In closing from the letter, she writes, Do you pray to God, Rodia, as you used to, and do you believe in the goodness of our Creator and Redeemer? I fear in my heart that you have been visited by this fashionable new unbelief. If so, I pray for you. Remember, my dear, in your childhood, when your father was alive, how you prattled out your prayers sitting on my knee, and how happy we all were then. So, Raskolnikov was raised in a Christian home, and this still haunts him to this day. Well, I wouldn't say haunts him, but it's still a major impact on his life. He thinks that the his new theories on Russian nihilism and the greater good and how he's an extraordinary man, they utterly fail him. And um, before the murder, in fact, he is still having doubts on whether or not he is truly this extraordinary man. His uh, Before the murder, he has his first dream in the book. The dream uh, can be summarized as Raskolnikov is dreaming about his childhood. He walks to his grandmother's tomb. He sees the tomb of his brother who died at six months old. He then sees a, um, a cart pulled by a small horse and some drunken peasants walking, or they get into the cart. Uh, the horse can't pull the drunken peasants. It's not strong enough. The peasants then go and proceed to beat the horse to death, and um, his father like holds him and uh, you know like comforts, comforts him. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is he gets comforted by his father, and then he wakes up. So in Rodeo's dream, there's a lot of symbolism that goes on and a lot of foreshadowing. Uh, the biggest one being that he is watching this horse being beat and bludgeoned in a gruesome way and in the dream and when he awakes he's horrified by this and doesn't understand really why these peasants would do such a thing. In fact he runs up and kisses the horse uh, right as it's drawing its last dying breaths. This um, is a manifestation of his underlying subconscious doubting what he's about to do and the um, the method or not methods but the motives behind uh, his upcoming actions, i.e. the murder of the pawnbroker. Because he's having these doubts, they come into play later after the um, murder and lay the groundwork for his just incredible unraveling of his moralistic beliefs. Second flaw he has in his theory on crime is um, he fails to live up to what he believes he thinks he is. He thinks that he's an extraordinary man. Now, an ordinary man is uh, a servant. They serve as material. They're the average man. But extraordinary men, or they are people who do something new and develop the world, and they lead the ordinary man. Extraordinary men are exempt from society, ingrained um, morality. They invent their own morality. They become their own god of sorts. And he fails to be an extraordinary man because he says they just don't question themselves. He questioned himself. Following the crime, he endured immense suffering. And in a conversation with Sonia, he claims that, he, I did not bow to you. I bow down to all the suffering of humanity. And this means that he is suffering. An extraordinary man would never suffer. An extraordinary man does what he thinks is right, and it is right in his own eyes. His suffering can be attributed to the guilt that ensued after the murder, and um, 
he did not, but he was not the extraordinary man he thought he was. He was simply ordinary. Raskolnikov has a, he idolizes Napoleon because when Napoleon dies, he is revered and celebrated amongst men. And Raskolnikov desires this very much. He feels as though that because of his education and his understanding of these new ideas, he is entitled to the same treatment. And so killing um, the pawnbroker should uh, thusly give him the praise that he so desires. However, after killing the um, old lady, she he begins to feel overwhelming guilt. And because this, it goes against uh, his beliefs that if he were an extraordinary man, he would feel no guilt. And this undermines a lot of his confidence and sends him in a downward spiral. An example of the extraordinary man in the book is Svidrigalov, even though he is a failed extraordinary man. He has, uh, Svidrigalov ha has one function in life, and that is to fulfill his sensual desires. Um, since there are no divine providences in his life, um, he asserts his own will and power. He tries to convince uh, Donya to marry him, elope with him. Um, he has no, even though he is married, um, he has no he has no um, has nothing against uh, getting his own way. He has, he sets no barriers barriers in front of himself. His life has been constructed on the idea that uh, his own feelings and pleasures are far more important than anyone else's. He can rape a uh, fifteen year old girl that's mute, and when she kills herself, hangs herself, he doesn't blink an eye. He simply shrugs his shoulders because it doesn't affect him. But um, the reason that he is a failed man and that the reason that the theory fails in general, along with uh, Raskolnikov's theories failing, is that Svidrigalov um, finally, you know, he sets uh, Donia down and Donia rejects him. Donia says that she does not want to marry him. She doesn't want to go to America with him and start a new life. But he himself goes to America in that he kills himself. In the scene following that, uh, Raskolnikov has a dream where Ilya Petrovich is beat to death in the street. Uh, in the dream, he comments that he has never heard such sounds and sights as what he sees in his dream. He, in fact, thinks that he's actually awake. He's deeply traumatized by what he sees and can't really process it just as he does not process the murder that he commits. This is a manifestation of his own guilt in his mind. Uh, again, his subconscious coming to the surface and trying to push out what he's thinking about when he's awake and really bringing out the true colors of Raskolnikov. Fyodor Dostoevsky explores many themes within his novels, not only Crime and Punishment, but his other works. Uh, the themes that we focus on today were the duality of Christianity versus intellectualism and the schism that Raskolnikov experiences and how it's manifested through the other characters um, and eventually becomes his downfall. Fyodor Dostoevsky explores several themes within Crime and Punishment as well as his other works, uh, but the ones that we've mostly focused on today were duality and Christianity uh, versus intellectualism and how neither of them mix. Raskolnikov is the perfect example of how to a person of two moralistic beliefs that follows neither of them will completely self-destruct. In the novel, the reason that uh, Raskolnikov's theory ultimately failed him, the main points that we hit in our presentation were his religious upbringing, his, uh, his Christian background, and that moral uh, foundation that he has. He the fact that he truly doubted himself and was never truly sure of his own theory, and his interactions with both Sonia and Porfiry, both leading him to confess his crime, and accept consequences. And the 
final one that we hit was his subconscious and his dreams, the things that he couldn't control himself.